And so, so now I'm cocky and I say, you know, I realize I'm right at that underneath the cloud deck and, and the thing is, you know, thundering. And so I, instead of waiting for this voice, which was really my Holy Christ self to say, you know, oh God, help me. I go, uh, Archangel Michael. And, and, and I've always identified that as myself, but this was before I found the teaching. And so, so it's, and it's why I don't tell the story so much because there's some sort of odd things about it, right? That, that my experience of Archangel Michael is really sort of from my buddy Dan's Catholicism because there's no other sort of reference for it. But it had to have been in there to be able to come out. But anyway, so I'm like, and sure enough, the angel sweeps in up through the cloud deck. And then this time, it's like a Gustav Dory painting or, or, or uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, what do they call it, a woodcut. And, and, and I'm like, whoa, what is this one? And, 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 and I knew that this was an Atmic sort of thing, and I don't know how I knew that, and, and, but anyways. And so what happens is it's just, I don't, I, and, and I always feel a little bit embarrassed talking about this because I know that it was assembled in such a way that I could consciously wrap my mind around it, right? But I don't care. Because to me, it's clouds, and there's choirs of angels, and all these clouds, and there's a great big white light up in the middle, and all these angels are there. And as I come up through the cloud deck, they all, these angels, go, ah, 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 ah. And, and all of these filaments that had just been cleansed off just goes, Bzzz. and I'm there, and I'm like literally... Uh, and these guys hold this note. They hold this note, and it just goes on and on. And every one of these little things that are on my etheric double are just basically, because some of them were turned, and some of them were still kind of kinky, some of them, and they started to come into the same resonance field. They were being tuned to a single harmonic note, which I'm... Sorry to tell you guys that it's within our, uh, because it, it, I'm saying sorry to tell you because it sounds ridiculous, but it was high C. Mm -hmm. It was high C. It was, you know, in the tone or the notes, it was high C. And, and so, and I tried to do that just now, and, and you notice how my voice didn't sound so good. Well, it actually was what happened when I was out, of, out in my OBE in this situation with, this, with these angels singing that I decided that I would start to sing too. And I sang just like I just did, right? You know, and, and, so, and so as I'm trying to hit this note with my own conscious voice and I'm feeling this, this tuning of these pans, these little filaments all over my body, um, and, 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 and you have to understand that there's a simultaneous event occurring where you're being taught all of this stuff. So there's a conscious sort of knowing at, at a cognitive level, then there's a soul training that's occurring. So I'm making it sound like it's a linear experience, but it's a very sort of spherical, rounded thing. And, and the, train, the soul training at that time was that many would lose their uh, heads in those days, and that those who will keep their heads in those days, meaning their attunement, will be as islands of sanctuary unto the multitude. And I was absolutely sure that was a scripture, and I've said it for years. And anyways, and so the point here is that those who keep the, those those who keep their head in those days shall be as islands of sanctuary unto the multitude, and that's where we're all trying to go. And so, so anyways, and so the next thing you know, uh, I'm trying to make the same note with my physical, uh, w not my physical, with my personal volition. And, and as I'm doing it, it sounded as flat and, and off as just where I was trying to do it there, mimicking it. But a funny thing happened was that suddenly playing in my mind was, uh, we have a place down at the lake, uh, or at, up at the lake, I guess is the way to say it. And it's actually my aunt's place, and aunt and uncle's place. And, 
this was many years ago, and there was this older lady um, who uh, her husband had died, and, and she was uh, a person who, uh, who sang, she was a singer, and, and she's a big, large lady, and, and her time was during World War II. And she, she had this little chihuahua, and she would dress the chihuahua up with this ruffles around its neck and a little clown hat and a little clown suit. And she would have uh, her and, and her dog uh, would perform. And so she would go, bring back the boys, and all of this songs from World War II. And the little chihuahua, he could walk on his back feet. And he would literally go, and he would sing with her, right? And as I started to sing with the angels, it popped into my mind so very solidly that I was the chihuahua. <laughs> and, uh, and it put me back in my body, just like that. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I mean, I just got into the chihuahua visualization. <laughs> Anyways, and, um, you know, and so, so what happens is that, is that we're in a situation where, where concentration, meditation, contemplation concentration is power, meditation is wisdom, and contemplation is love. Concentration is where you focus your energy. Meditation is where you understand what it is that you're choosing to be. And then contemplation is becoming that through an act of love. And I was shown that, that, that we're, co we're coming to a place where where we're going to have to start to have it so that so that that we are believers because of experience rather than it just simply makes sense to us and and it doesn't mean that we're all going to have to be thomases that we have to have put our fingers in the holes before we're going to believe that Jesus is back but there is a power in this thing. And so when Gautama, and this is not written down anywhere, it's actually it's, there was this uh, adept in, in what, what do you call him, Selenese? Adept, anyways. Uh, so this is why I don't talk about this stuff because it's a little bit odd. But, but you see, Gautama, he, he had, when he seen this, these, this dead body, it shocked his, his cocoon, and it opened up, and he popped out, right? He popped out, and when he popped out, he seen that he had only so much time before that thing was going to close again. And, and so he's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I'm, I'm going to be getting married soon. I got this stuff happening. And so and then, boing, it closes on him, right? And so... Um, Next thing he's married, next thing you know, uh, his wife is giving birth. And so what, the, what did Gautama name his son? Rajamar. Which means? Uh, means fetter. Mm -hmm. Which means ball and chain. He named his son ball and chain. Now, when the Brahmin priests got a hold, because they didn't want Buddhism, Right? So all they had to do was say, you know, in Hinduism, we are very family oriented and we honor the family, we look after the family. And look at what this guy did. Mm -hmm. Right? He left his wife with an infant. The old king got older and older and more decrepit and, and couldn't keep back the other Kshatriya families, which is, you know, a warrior clan, couldn't keep them back. And Literally, not long after Buddha had received his enlightenment, he got word that, that his father's kingdom was overran by another Kshatriya king, and the whole works, all these people killed, all these pe uh, people were enslaved, and his wife become a concubine, and his son a eunuch, and all of that stuff. And, you know, it was said that the Buddha was... You know, even though he was enlightened, it wasn't a happy day for him. 
And so why would the Buddha leave his, his wife and, and infant baby? Why would he call his son Fetter, ball and chain? Well, because when this thing opens up and you step out of this thing, you have literally a different set of responsibilities. You are now responsible for every person on planet Earth who could come home. There's some people who are not coming home. There's some people not coming home. And, and the prophecy that was given at Crow Patrick, that mother gave this uh, prophecy at Crow Patrick, which is, Crow means uh, mountain or rock, and it was where St. Patrick had his moment of come to Jesus, and, uh, or it was actually Jesus come to him. Anyways, and so um, the prophecy says that, that 12 will awaken, and those 12 will awaken the, the 144,000. And the 144,000 awakening will awaken the children of God. And the children of God, in their zeal, right, will literally bestow three full flames on fallen angels, mechanization man, right? And, and you know, that seems impossible. But this is where we're at, is that, is that, we as older souls, the mature sons and daughters of God, are simply trigger pullers. And we have to get ourselves in such a way that we're going to be able to, to not have it so that the children of God have to morph to our particular psychodynamic before they can get our message. But we have to become f facile. We have to become flexible. We have to become like spring steel, where we will not literally be broken in our bending or lose the center of, of who we are in that bending, right? And so I found it very interesting that the victory on planet Earth it will be done by the children of God because they believe without having to have it all proven like the older souls. We, that, and I can't remember what dictation that was, but it said, uh, it said um, you know, there are all these, all these younger souls that have basically ascended. They've gone through the little ivory gate, and, and, and here you guys are, all you old uh, potentates, was the word that was used. He said, you know, you're these big birds, and this is the time when the whole winds of the Holy Spirit are strong enough that you can actually take to the air, and it's time. And, and, and you know, literally, our job is to, sorry? Endure to the end. Our job is to, to end up in, in the, this place where we are able to be facile enough, flexible enough without losing who we really are.